Morning Brewers. Very, very early morning too because it's currently 20 to 6 on a Saturday. Getting up nice and early to get to work and getting some socks on in the car park downstairs. Uh, what a night! The Mighty Tigers, not so mighty against Collingwood, but uh, disappointing, I know. Last year I had the best grand final experience ever because I was working. I uh, work in radio during the week and I did a Saturday morning shift on grand final day last year. Finished up at noon, got home, cooked a gourmet barbecue for the family and then sat down and watched the Mighty game and was uh, tasting three really delicious IPAs too. If you want to find out more, you can check out the reviews and the beers that I drank and uh, by half time my heart was absolutely pumping being a Tigers fan. Uh, full details at uh, beersinmybackyard.blogspot.com. Anyway... Probably not going to happen again this year. Now that Richmond are out, my wife is a Collingwood fan, so I don't know. I guess it's going to be a big day of barbecue and record leagues. I'll wait and see. On to the latest episode. Now, I had the great pleasure last year of catching up with an absolute superstar in terms of beer knowledge and just passion too. Because uh, with another guy that I work with by the name of Al, hello Al Doby, we were creating a podcast series called Who the Hell? And interviewing various people, some famous, some not, at this stage, uh, and asking them a bunch of whole, a whole bunch of random questions, really. And Al got on to the head brewer of Bolter, the guys behind amazing beers like the Bolter XPA and also the Black Metal Disco. And uh, again, you can check out the uh, Blogspot site for a few reviews of the beers. And yeah, they are just absolutely top notch. Anyway, uh, Al got on to um, Scott Hargrave, who's the head brewer there, invited him in to tell his story and his journey from concreting to uh, becoming the head brewer. And it's a phenomenal story. It really, really is. If you have had any dreams of quitting what you're doing and focusing on beer, I reckon you should have a really good listen to this. Just a fascinating journey from, from something just clicking in his brain to the point where he would thought, I'm going to make something of it and look where he is now. So without any further ado, here it is. Enjoy your weekend. I'll go and do my work shift and then hopefully have a nap this afternoon. I'll talk to you soon. Think you know a person? Let's delve a little deeper. This is Who the Hell with Al Doby and Al Shield. This week, Al, a person who, well, we want to know more about. Who the hell is Scott Hargraves? A massive person of interest in our own world, Al, because Scott is involved in that wonderful world that you and I consume being beer. Well, I think uh, as summer has hit us, beer is really important in everyone's life and, and doing it responsibly. Just Absolutely. Just to make sure we, we get that out there. But it's a, uh, a brewery called Balta, and the story behind Balta is interesting in itself. But Scott joins us now for Who the Hell. And Scott, take us back to the very start where you were living in Canberra. What, what were you doing? G'day, fellas. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I was uh, I was a concrete contractor. I had my own concrete business with my wife, plugging away, making concrete, driving a bobcat, doing the do. Around about sort of 2000 or so, yeah, around about the the start of the new century, I started to have a started to wander a bit. Like I'd always been a you know I'd been playing in bands and stuff, so I was a I'd used to drink. Melbourne tinnies, basically. <laughs> Have them lined up across the Marshall when we're doing gigs or person or whatever. But I started to explore different flavours and different types of beers, you know, and it was it was very early on in the piece. So the Little Creatures Pale Ale had just come out and it was, I think it was still called Little Creatures Live then. And Chuck Hahn's, um, uh the Malt Shovel James Squire range had only just started to come out the very first of those beers you know and i was trying all these beers and then palming them off to my mates and you know sort of <laughs> slap another uh industrial lager junk they had in their hands and, here try this and just generally pestering people yeah you know, <laughs> so that's when the bug bit when you yeah. discovered this this alternate world to what you've been drinking yeah what got you to the point where you said you know look i've been concreting for quite some time now I want to try something different. Yeah, well, I had, um, I think it was around March 2006, I went to um, an adult education course at the Wigan Pen in Canberra. So very in craft beer, Australian craft beer circles, very, uh, you know, much loved and well-known um, uh, brew pub, basically right in the middle of Canberra. And um, the guy who owned the place was doing this half-day adult education course on the history of brewing. So he got a couple of kilos of barley malt and wheat malt and, and put them together in a in a lunchbox esky basically and boiled a jug and put some hot water in it and said this is a mash this yeah. is how the beginnings of the it start be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> as soon as i actually smelt that mash um there's something changed in my brain chemistry that was it like it just i'd never had anything to do with brewing 
apart from one or two attempts at a Cooper's kit, you know, with the goo. But <laughs> proper all grain brewing, I knew nothing about and had hadn't been anywhere near it. But as soon as I smelt that mash, then um, it was so so primal, so familiar as well. Yep. And it was almost like uh, I've said it a few times. It's almost like I I, I smelt that those aromas and just went I'm home like there was something, <laughs> something about it and like, yeah. I, di- I didn't know anything still at that stage so so you, you started brewing in your own home yep so Lockie McComish the guy who owned the the Wigan Pen at the time I said so during this course everyone else had left and I'm still bugging Lockie at the bar <laughs> t- several hours later and he's going here try this beer this yeah. is from Germany try this beer this one's made with this yeast and this malt and blah 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 blah. and I said so can you actually be a can you be a brewer if you're not a chemical engineer or some sort of food scientist he said, yeah of course you can if you're passionate enough and you're good enough and you know and you, and you stick at it of course you can he goes and uh, and get your home brewing in order and there was a Canberra Brewers poster on the wall for a local home brew club <laughs> And I didn't tell him that I hadn't done any home brewing yet. Yeah. I just went, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm on to that. I'll keep yeah. going. Yeah. So, <laughs> so then I went and uh, I joined the Canberra Brewers Club and got to meet some people there and got hand-me-down equipment, as you do, and started yep. making making beer and then making better and better beer and then starting to win medals and, and, and awards and a national title for a wheat beer and all that sort of stuff. One thing I'm really curious about, Scotty, one of, one of the beers that you did make, and this is going back, I think, 15 years ago now, a beer inspired by Angus Young's Rosewood Guitar. Please <laughs> take us back. You wanted to brew a beer with the same colour as this guitar. Yeah, that's true, actually. It was, that is uh, very cool. It was a copy of... I was, I was trying to get the same colour as one of Angus Young's um, 64 SGs, I think it was, because, like, I was still, you know, still have lots of musical equipment. I've got a couple of Les Pauls and bits and pieces. And I thought, just in my journey, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I could make a guitar, <laughs> uh, sorry, make a beer that l- is the same colour as that sort of burgundy colour yeah. of that guitar? Yeah. And I did. And I actually thought, you know, bugger it, I don't care if the beer's any good. I'll, I'll tip it out. But if I get the colour <laughs> I get the colour right, I'll be happy. So I brewed the beer. It was uh, a Munich Dunkel, which is a sort of multi, sort of, darker amber to darker coloured sort of German lager basically you know and yeah. um and stuck it in the Canberra Brewers comp and it won a won a gold medal I think so that's unreal it turned out to be a pretty handy beer D- does Angus Young know about this I doubt it <laughs> I, was, I was gonna ask have, has he tried it you haven't sent him any of the brew or no no it didn't last only, that long <laughs> no the only claim to fame there was I brewed a, a one of my wheat beers was called Wise Blood which is uh named after a corrosion of conformity album I don't know if you know those guys they're sort of southern metal from in the U.S sort of, you know, Black Sabbath inspired. Wow. Sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And Pepper Coonan, the lead singer and guitarist, was playing another band called Down. And as I'd left Canberra and, and started to work on the sunny coast, there was a, a Down concert in Brisbane. And uh, I actually got to uh, to meet Pepper and tell him that, hey, I named a beer after your album and it just won the <laughs> national titles. <laughs> And so I was like, well, you got to get me a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I own a bar in New Orleans. So do they serve that brew there now? Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking with Scott Hargraves, who's the uh, the head brewer of Bolter Brewing, which is a, uh, a craft brewery on the Gold Coast. Now, when did it become a job for you when you were getting paid to brew beer? Uh, September 1, 2008 which I worked out was about 23 months after that first all-grain beer that I made myself in my garage. Wow. So, so it was pretty quick. Like When I'd sort of decided, wow, I wonder if I could actually make a job out of this. You know, I, I'd come home from the wig and pan, and the next morning I'm lying in bed going, do I even dare to dream that I could actually do this for a living? Yeah. And I sort of sort of didn't go there. But I just, you know, I started the home brewing thing and just got better and better. And, and it, for me, it was about trying to hone my skills that I would actually be you know, a, a candidate for a brewing job to get myself to that scale, you know, to that to that sort of proficiency. And luckily enough, that's that's what happened. I'd, I'd seen this ad for the Sunshine Coast brewery job. And um, at the time, most of the most of the new craft breweries in, in Australia were sort of popping up around in Victoria and particularly in Melbourne. I was sort of always looking south thinking, saying to my wife, if I get good enough at this and we actually get, we have to be brave enough to take one of these jobs if I actually get offered one. Because yeah, she was wanting yeah. to get me out of concrete and so Leap I'm of looking, faith stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking south from Canberra down towards you know thinking, God, you know Canberra was drought bitten at the time. I thought it's going to be even drier where we're probably headed. And I saw an ad for the Sunshine Coast, and I'll be quite honest, I had to Google it to find out where it was. <laughs> I thought it was actually just north of here. I thought you had Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, Brisbane. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that, everybody up there. Um, so 
I said to my wife, wow, that's 1,500 k's away. Logistically, that's just no go. You know, yeah. That's just silly. And she's turned around and goes, yeah, no, you ring him. Ring him tomorrow. Wow. So the next morning, I'm in my bobcat digging out another driveway, and I started getting these texts from my wife. Have you rung those guys yet? Have you rung those guys yet? Have yeah. you rung those guys yet? And I'm like, nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Leave you alone. <laughs> the last one that's uh, that afternoon, like that was about the twentieth one. It was don't effing come home until you've rung those guys. So yeah. my, my wife basically bullied me into. You got to do what a wife says. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, I love her for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and a now, lot of other people do too. Now look where you are. I mean, look currently, Scotty, you're sitting here in the studio. A bolter t-shirt, a bolter hat. Did you ever envisage you get to the point where you even had your own clothing for this? Yeah. <laughs> no, not really. You just, you just never know. I suppose. All right, Sunshine Coast for how long? Almost exactly a year. I got up there and um, spent a year sort of learning the ropes, I suppose, as a brewer. W- was I actually good enough to do this commercially? Because mm. mm. you sort of wonder while you're there going, am I a fraud? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> luckily enough, I won uh, the champion reduced alcohol category at the Australian International Beer Awards about six months in. And another one of my dark wheat beers and, uh, won a gold medal. So I sort of thought, yeah, I, I mightn't be too bad at this. Yeah. <laughs> You know, concrete may well be in the rear vision mirror for good now. Yeah. And um, bang on about a year into that job, I got asked to be um, Stone and Wood's first full-time employee. So I went and did that for four years. So. That's amazing because Stone and Wood in the craft brewing world is an iconic yeah. brand yeah. of beer. Oh, yeah, and Legends. They're great guys. And Byron Bay based. Yep. So from Sunshine Coast down to Byron Bay, similar kind of lifestyle? Yeah, yeah. Back to New South Wales. I'm a New South Wales boy, so... Um, it was good to not get heckled so much during State of Origin. So, yeah. <laughs> Always important no matter where you work. Yeah, oh, it hasn't been good this last decade, has it? Really? So, <laughs> no, it hasn't. You're right. You're no, right. You're right. But, uh, yeah, so w- w- I went down to Stonewood. I was very fortunate to be able to, you know, to be in there so early on. And I got to um, learn a lot about the beer business itself with, uh, with the guys who, who started the business, the founders, um, you know, who between them had Brad Ross and Jamie had like 50 something years, I think, of Australian brewing experience between them so that was really really uh attractive to me you know and i thought it was important you know to be able to to go and work for and with guys like that where uh, Mm. i was able to learn not so much about the brewing side because i was i was sort of already getting pretty good at that but but how the beer business actually works as well how many other moving parts are to it so because it's not just the brewing side of course there's so much more to it there's the marketing and Mm. branding side of it which is so important you know there's the logistics side of it so important it's all good if i make great beer but if we can't get it to anybody what's the point yeah no one's drinking it yeah Yeah. yeah. and when you were with stone and wood and you went to a pub or you went to a bottle shop and you saw it did you kind of pinch yourself and go that I'm part of that. That's mine. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. The funny thing is now with Bolter, people go, oh, I saw your beer in Mexico or I saw your beer in, you know, <laughs> yeah. pe- pe- all people sending me photos of people in Perth drinking it yep. and all over the place, you know, and I, I sort of, I guess I'm so wrapped up and head down, bum up in getting this thing up and going with all my colleagues and that, that yeah, I probably don't stop and smell the roses enough. But I love that everyone else does. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone else yeah, is Everyone else is appreciating your, your hard work. Yeah. Okay, so from uh, Stone and Wood to... Where? Uh, so I, I did Stone and Wood for four years and then I went uh, over to Byron Bay Brewing Company and I spent 18 months there as head brewer there. And um, yeah, I got to uh, get back to more a sort of brew pub style environment for a while and mm. uh, until the guys who were you know beginning to form Bolter came calling. And So which one of the legends phoned you was it mick fanning was it joel parkinson was it b derbage was it josh kerr or was it the silent partner that isn't a surfer or of, of yeah. note yeah it, it was it was actually a guy called sean ronan who lives in san diego he's he's one of josh kerr's neighbors and you know they're they're sort of very good friends so sean was was the four boys this was basically bead's idea he wanted to start a brew pub or a brewery on stradbroke on Stratty. but you know the other boys talked him around and said it's an island. You can't get stuff on or, on or off very easily. <laughs> yes. It's and, a nice island, but yeah, it is. It takes and, a bit of a trip. Yeah, the beer won't get off the island because everyone on Stratty is going to drink it. The beer is in the North Stradbroke Hotel. I know, it's awesome. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel really proud for Bead about that because his, yeah. his grandparents built the pub too, I think. So the original concept was, was Bead and, you know, he got Mick and Joel and Josh and Sean involved and, you know, it was like, well, we need to do this somewhere more you know, more realistic. So it turned out to be the Gold Coast. So Sean got in contact with me initially. So San Diego is the pretty much the center of US craft brewing at the moment. It's, uh, you know, that 
the the west coast thing is is pretty significant over there san diego county has like a hundred breweries or something <laughs> yeah it's insane wow you know? and so to have this guy ringing from san diego or facetime and going do you want to start a brewery yeah. and i'm like oh, maybe and i didn't know that the other guys are involved yet and then it eventually got revealed that you know it was mick and joel and the other guys and i kind of groaned and, but they know that like, they'll they try and make out that i hated them but i didn't I, you were aware I just of who was very they were. Yeah. yeah yeah i knew they were surfers and i thought yeah ah oh, yeah that was too good to be true wasn't it so uh, <laughs> here's, here's a bunch of guys who are going to want me to try and make a corona knockoff or something uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that yeah, would no, your nightmare right yeah, there. no wow. and i thought no i've worked too hard to to go and try and do something like you know like just destroy a hard won reputation i suppose yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So it took a bit of convincing, but they're wrong. I did, never hated them. I was just like, didn't, didn't, didn't <laughs> you, you know. You want to make sure like, everything was right. Was, yeah. I was, protective. I'm, yeah, very protective of, of the industry as well, because the, if I'd have been the wrong person, I could have, you know, they would have sold some beer mm. anyway, you know, and if yeah. it hadn't have been very good or as a really cynical take on, on things, you know, it could have actually just introduced a virus into this industry that I love so much, you yeah. know, so... I've actually had a few of my peers who've said, we're really glad that it's you. We all as an industry <laughs> owe you a pat on the back because you're the head brewer at Bolton, not, you know, not, not some you know, industrial brewer. Or, Cookie cutter you know, type. Yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah. you literally started from scratch, didn't you? You walked into a shed that was full of cobwebs and they yep. said, build yep. us a brewery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's part of what sort of got me over the line was, you know, ultimately, I think it was Mick said, mate, look, all we want is, do you want to come and build your dream brewery? Make the beer you want to make. We've we've heard you're the man, so we just want you to help us out and lead us into this. And and you rang your wife and said, "Can you believe what's just happening?" Yeah, well, I went home and told her that they, you know, that they'd offered me, you know, to be part of Balta, and and I sort of left them, sort of left it about a week before I got back in contact with them. And again, that's where my wife started to bully me, and she. <laughs> She wanted to punch the crap out of me, basically. Going, what are you doing? Why, why haven't you said yes to this? And I guess, if anything, I'm sometimes a bit of a deep thinker. So it was, I just, yeah. I was just trying to plot out every possible outcome, and yeah, you know, and and weigh it all up. I was, I've been fortunate, I suppose. At the same time, I had three or four other offers to do yeah. things. You know, so okay. I feel very fortunate there that I didn't feel trapped in a corner. I had. You know, it was it was almost the other being damned by having too many offers or decisions to make. But at, at the end of the day, we got the the right one. So I mean, because I still we still live in Byron Bay, so it's a forty five minute drive yep. every day. But yep. you know, live in Byron, build a brewery in Corumbin. I don't try not to complain too much. <laughs> That's a tough life. And part of the brewery is you've set up a bar. Like it's it's a very uh, kind of I suppose traditional style tiled kind of bar setup. Yeah, yeah. We've got a twelve tap tap room there so um part of my wish list i suppose when i was saying yes to boulder was among other things was to have a pilot system mm. like it's a 500 liter pilot system so i can make sort of eight to ten kegs at a time and have a, a tap room where we could display those beers as well because i through my experience obviously with stone and wood with a beer like pacific ale it's, it was such a leviathan brand that quite often we didn't get to make much else because we had to spend so much time just keeping up with demand for that beer. So I was thinking if the same thing happened with the Bolter beers, at least I had the pilot system to be able to test new recipes, try new hops, try new yeasts, new techniques, come up with you know the ideas for the next lot of beers and, and the seasonal releases and one-offs and all that sort of stuff. And that's really what sort of motivates me to get out of bed now is, is where's that next great yeah. beer. I like to think that a beer has to have a reason for being. You want to make a beer because there was something driving you to do that, you know. Is, mm. it, a, is it a new hop I want to try? Is it is it a burgundy coloured beer that looks like a 64 <laughs> SG? Or... From Angus Young. <laughs> From, yeah, story. yeah, you know, or, uh, you know, all that sort of thing. I mean, the craft beer, for want of better words, thing has sort of fractured to that point now where in some cases it can be like a rod for our own backs where just there's almost this demand for weirder and stranger beers day after day and, and they eventually eventually sort of turn in on themselves and quite often I've, I've tasted plenty of beers like that who have been awesome and, and really have pushed the boundaries and furthered the frontiers of beers but then you get others that just should never have been brewed in the first place and I've done a few yeah. of those. <laughs> you know what I mean beer for a lot of people uh, it's like a song when you hear that song and you go oh, I remember when I first heard that song yeah. for me when I first tasted XPA 
Yeah, I go straight back to my back deck with my cousin a couple of years ago when I first tasted it, and he said, "You got to try this." And I go straight back to that afternoon, and it was a long afternoon. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you immediately go straight back to it. It's a weird thing, but it just has that effect you, on people. It's obviously you're attributing great memories to it. Great right? memories. And, yeah. and that's great. I mean, yeah. I had one earlier this year too. Uh, cricketers, uh, keepers arms. But just, just the smell yep. brought me back to being 22 and hanging out with mates. Well, I wasn't drinking that beer back when I was 22, but just that smell of that particular beer just, yeah. just suddenly gave me a flashback. And there I went, cool, I'm 22 again. That's 15 years ago now. So yeah. that's been some time. But that's an incredible well, effect that it can have. Oh, absolutely. And your sense of smell is is central to you know to all of that. It does evoke yes. memories. And I read something the other day. There's there's something like a, you know, a, a thousand genes in the human genome attributed to, to your sense of smell, to your olfactory system all over. But there's only about four attributed to sight to vision really wow. so yeah like it's incredible just how deeply embedded in your brain your <laughs> yeah. sense of smell is and and of course taste is a combination of aroma and you know flavor is a yep. combination of aroma and taste and yep. mouth feel and yeah it's it's no surprise i mean I, I still do too you know like you try different beers and they just take you back scott we've been talking about beer for uh, quite a while but you've, you've got how many different kinds of beers now that Bolter put out? At the moment, we've got a core range of four. Yep. Uh, the XPA, Pilsner, IPA, and Alt Brown. Yep. And we do seasonal releases. We did one earlier in the year called Black Metal Disco. <laughs> I love that name. Which is a stout. So I bought a four-pack for you. I love wow. that name. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and next year, like, I've got a whole roster of seasonals and, you know, a couple of one-offs and also uh, some collaborations where... Um, we're very fortunate that we're uh, uh, Australia's champion medium-sized brewery at the AIBA Awards last year. And champion small brewery was Green Beacon, the boys up at Are the guys up behind in Brisbane. Wayfarer? Yep. Johan and the crew up at uh, Green Beacon are the champion small brewery. We're champion medium brewery and Stone and Wood is champion large brewery. So part of winning that this year at the Australian International Beer Awards is we all get together sort of probably February, March next year and collaborate and make a champion's beer. So... <sighs> And it's pretty cool. The, oh, world, the, oh, the brew of the brewmasters. When, yeah, yeah, when does yeah. that come out? And how do we find uh, yeah, out? Yeah, probably about... for May. It'll be ready for the next lot of beer awards. <laughs> and what's it going to be called? And how do we find out about it? <laughs> no, I'd say all all of the breweries will probably uh, you know on our social media, but also the uh, uh, Good Beer Week and Australian International all Beer right. Awards. Yeah. The beer media will be would cover it. Yeah, oh, so. yeah, absolutely. You've tasted plenty of beers in your lifetime. Can you remember the worst? Um, <laughs> gee, there's been a few. <laughs> <laughs> And I've, I've probably brewed most of them. Oh, I see. That's yeah. the self-deprecation. No, yeah, I was going to say, that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, look, I have made a couple of shockers in my time, but that's the whole thing. I've got uh, I've got a, a garage at home where I've still got a 50-litre home brew system that's actually cobbled together out of a, a Gatorade um, uh, you know, container. Uh, I like the ones that they use in the NFL. Yeah, the big yeah. round ones, yeah. <laughs> So it's that, and and also we, I boil the beer up and, and make the beer in a, an old 1940s or 1950s Mallee's wash copper, yep. like oh. Granny would it, yep. used to use. So it used to be a joke. I used to, when I was at Stan and Wood, I'd make a bunch of beer at home for our Christmas parties, and, and I'd put it in my 20-litre corny kegs and, and put it in uh, one of the big yellow-lidded recycled bins and about six bags of ice, and away we went. Because we've been making Pacific Ale all year. We didn't yep. necessarily want to drink it, but the joke was always... <laughs> Stanwood Christmas party beer is made in a washing machine, served out of a garbage <laughs> bin. <laughs> and, and, and the thing I love as well, I mean, we do live on the Gold Coast. We're lucky enough to be near the brewery. But you guys behind the bar, sometimes Mick and Joel will pop up and you yourself will start pouring the beer. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, beer is of the people, by yeah. the people, for the people, it should be. <laughs> You know, so yeah, when the boys, I mean, they're all, sorry, they're all over at, uh, they're all uh, overseas in Hawaii at the moment, probably the last time Beetle surf over there. When they're back in town, you know, the boys are popping in usually. Obviously, they want to drink some beer. But <laughs> for sure. Not just but to they'll say get hi. In. Yeah, they'll yeah. get in and uh, and give us a hand and help out. So. Are you surprised with the growth? Because it has gone pretty yeah. ballistic, hasn't it? Yes. When I first got to sit down and design the brewery, you know, it was like, what sort of size brew house are we going to have? And, you know, how much beer can we make a year? And... Even, again, part of the reason I wanted that pilot system was because I thought, wow, this 
this brew house is just going to be huge. We're going to be making an enormous amount of beer and I hope we're not sitting on it too long, you know, that we've got the ability to make a lot of beer and not sell it. But I was wrong almost immediately with that, which is great, you know. So, <laughs> so it's kind of good to, you know, the, to have our supply chains are nice and short, you know, so we don't have beer sitting around very long. And particularly this time of year, we're, uh, we're making as much as we can and there's almost nothing in the cold room every day. Because yes. it's going straight out onto trucks and straight out into uh, wow, out into the trade, and then hopefully straight home to people's fridges or off to their favourite pub or yeah. Whatever. So I mean, it's it does blow my mind, like living in Byron, to to know that you know the beers on at all the pubs in Byron and has been for a while. You know, the Brunswick Hotel going further north, so you know lots of places yep. up here as well. You know, uh, right through Brisbane, Melbourne's always been really good. Sydney, yep. Adelaide, Perth. Like, yeah, just, it's just gone off. Yeah. Well, I'm going to Melbourne over Christmas, and I looked on the uh, the, the map. Where can I get it? I went on to the <laughs> on the website. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. just on the way down to where I'm going, there's a, a spot there. I'll pop in. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. No, Melbourne's been very, very kind to us. They like what we do down there, so that's great. We started off by learning your journey, Scott, and, and the fact that you just you went to this amazing course came highly recommended you started picking the brains of everyone involved flash forward to now are you the guy that people are picking the brains of uh yeah that happens a bit i feel usually very sort of humbled and and flattered that that people care enough about my opinions to to ring up other great professional brewers you know we'll do that so that's that's the fraternal beauty of good beer i suppose in australia at our level you know we're not throwing brickbats at each other we're, we're <laughs> yeah, helping yeah, each other out you know we have a common enemy which yeah. is basically indifference or unawareness of, of all these great australian brewers who are punching out in a lot of cases you know world-class beer what about uh, concreting advice? Are you still getting any calls for that? Or? <laughs> Do you know, for up and, it only stopped four or five years ago where I'd get phone calls going, oh, hello, Scotty, uh, you did my driveway about 12 years ago. <laughs> and my, my sister-in-law wants a house slab done. Um, do you reckon you can? I'll be like, um, yeah, sorry. I, 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 I brew beer and I live in Byron Bay now. <laughs> it must sound good to be able to say that. Good for you. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott Hargraves, the uh, the chief brewer of Bolter Brewery, based on the Gold Coast here. Thank you. And who the hell is Scott Hargraves, Al? We now know. Oh, and what a journey it's been to. Yeah, thanks for coming in, Scott. And no uh, thanks, fellas. All the best for Christmas. Yeah, you too. Have a good one. 